Mangrove Lithium has developed the technology for the next generation of lithium processing and refining. Think of us in the same way as an oil and gas refinery does for crude oil to gasoline. What we do for lithium is producing the key raw materials that go into battery manufacturing. And we do that all with a proprietary electrochemical process that our, our company has developed. Over the past decade, the energy density of commercial batteries has increased by fourfold, and the cost of batteries, meanwhile, has come down some 90%. Safe to say, electrification is mainstream. But with that mainstream comes an opportunity to make this whole thing that much more efficient, to make supply chains more robust, to make processes that much slicker, and to further reduce emissions as well. And today, we've come to Mangrove Lithium, who think that they have some of the most efficient lithium going. We're here to find out how, and this is the Everything Electric Show. Our three free YouTube channels on EVs and clean tech are funded by our fun-packed Test Drive-tastic events in Farnborough, London, the South West, the North, Melbourne and Sydney, and next up we're in Canada for Everything Electric Vancouver. And new for UK viewers, you can buy a battery electric vehicle or more at everythingelectric.store. Back to the episode. What our electrochemical process does is instead of using chemicals to do the refining, we use electrons to do the refining. And this allows us to eliminate the chemicals. This allows us to eliminate a lot of the costs associated with the chemicals, the impurities that come with them, but also it allows us to eliminate all of the sodium sulfate waste and that is, that is often generated. I just want to pick up on sodium sulfate because this was a waste stream that I just didn't appreciate was a was a challenge to the lithium refining industry. So sodium sulfate um, is, is a waste byproduct that's made from different parts of the battery supply chain. So um, it comes from cathode active manufacturing, it comes from other parts of it, it also comes from lithium processing and refining. Uh, however, as the battery market has grown, as the demand for batteries has grown, the amount of production of sodium sulfate has significantly increased. So when we talk about uh, lithium chemicals um, if, if that go into batteries, for every ton of lithium chemicals that a traditional process makes, it makes two and a half tons of sodium sulfate that needs to be managed, that needs to be disposed. Uh, one, it's a cost related to the uh, chemicals, but it's also a disposal cost. And if you can't manage that, if you can't dispose it, which tends to be an, uh, a particular issue for North American, Australian, uh, or other jurisdictions, then it's very difficult to actually build the plant to be able to, uh, to provide those lithium chemicals. When we run our electrochemical process, we provide the hydroxide ions uh, with electricity. And that allows us to eliminate the chemicals, which also eliminates the sodium sulfate waste and allows us to be in a much better position in being able to provide uh, technology and a solution uh, that can actually be deployed in geographies that are non-China. This is Mangrove Lithium's pilot line facility capable of producing 10 tonnes per year of lithium. Now that might not sound like very much, but over there they're currently building out the line that will be capable of producing 1,000 tonnes per year of lithium, which is the equivalent of the amount of lithium needed for about 25,000 EVs. And in fact, they've also just announced a factory which will be able to produce enough lithium for 500,000 EVs. Now, given that 70% of lithium refining currently takes place in China, that is a huge step to help diversify that supply chain away from China. Now, the reason that they can do all of that is because the process they've developed is very modular and therefore very easily scaled. And the secret to all of it lies behind this blue curtain. But in order to understand what's going on in there, first, a few notes on lithium. Lithium really is the beating heart of all battery chemistries, NMC, LFP, solid state, you name it. And the reason is because it is the lightest metal on the periodic table, and it also packs the highest charge per unit mass, making it much more energy dense than alternatives like sodium, even though they sit very closely together on the periodic table. And on top of all of that, it can give up its electrons really easily, which is exactly what you want when building a battery, so that electrical current can flow when charging or discharging your battery. But the problem is, is that lithium doesn't just turn up in its pure form ready to use. It needs to be extracted. And for that, there are two main methods. There's hard rock mining in which spodumene rich ore is extracted out of the ground in places like Canada, Australia, and China. And there's brine extraction, which happens in places like Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina, in which the lithium is um, evaporated in these huge ponds. 
There is also an emerging technology called direct lithium extraction, but that is not yet viable at a huge commercial scale. So instead, we need these very resource and energy intensive methods. And even then, we don't get lithium in its form ready to use. Typically, it results in lithium carbonate or lithium sulfate. And that needs to be turned into lithium hydroxide or lithium carbonate. And it's that particular process which mangrove lithium has a really interesting solution. Maybe to take the example of your spodumene feet, okay? So with spodumene, you're gonna start with these rocks. There's lithium in here, but I can't readily extract that, can't get, as you're saying, to that lithium sulfate intermediate or further through to that battery precursor. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna start with a, an acid leach effectively, where I'm gonna use sulfuric acid to extract the lithium and create a lithium sulfate solution. So. What we're then gonna use is uh, one of Mangrove's electrolyzers to convert this lithium sulfate into lithium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, with the latter going back to the front end to extract more lithium sulfate. This is uh, one of our small lab scale electrolyzers. Mm -hmm. um, so just to, just to pause on electrolyzers, so we've got an anode and a cathode like we would in electrolysis for like, say hydrogen. Yeah, exactly, yeah, so in a, in a Simple electrolyzer, you just have your anode and cathode and some kind of separator. This is a multi-component, multi-compartment uh, electrolyzer. Okay. And so that means that I've got, uh, between my cathode and anode, I've got additional compartments which allow me to flow different electrolytes uh, in parallel through that electrochemical cell. Okay, so just to check that I've understood, we are taking our lithium sulfate and it is going into one of these layers. Yep. And through the power of electrolysis, we're somehow going to extract those ions. And I think that's what you're gonna tell me next. Yeah, exactly. So in any electrochemical cell, you have your cathode and uh, anode, which provide an electric field. And as I flow that salt through the electrochemical cell, through that electric field, the electric field splits the salt apart. Got it. So lithium is a positive ion, and it's gonna get pulled towards our negative electrode, which is our cathode and the sulfate, which is a negative ion, is gonna get pulled towards the positive electrode, our anode, okay? So as it, as it gets split apart, those ions move across ion exchange membranes, uh, and that allows the lithium to then move towards the lithium hydroxide flow stream, and the sulfate goes towards our sulfur, sulfuric acid uh, flow stream. Okay, so then at the end of it, we have sulfuric acid, H2SO4. That's right. Yes. And then we have our lithium hydroxide. Yep. Okay. Exactly. I told you how I get the lithium and the sulfate there, but H2SO4, I also need to provide protons. And lithium hydroxide, I need to provide hydroxide. And that's really the second critical function of your electrodes. Not only do they provide the electric field to split the salt, but the reactions occurring on those electrodes provide the protons for the acid and the hydroxide for the lithium hydroxide. So, the lithium is going towards the cathode. It needs to be met with a hydroxide in order to create lithium hydroxide. That's right, yeah. And on the other side, we have the sulfate or sulfur. Well, sulfate, sulfate. I guess. Sulfate, yep. Yep, going towards the anode and we need to find our source of hydrogen, our protons. That's right. To create H2SO4. So this is really neat because it's modular. It sort of has an enormous amount of circularity or it's a closed loop sort of system. Yep. It can't have been that simple though. What are some of the really big technical innovations that have had to happen to make this possible? Yeah, so one of the key innovations that we've pioneered uh, here at Mangrove has been the development of an oxygen cathode, which can provide the hydroxide ions needed to make lithium hydroxide uh, at a lower cost than conventional electrodes might provide, um, as well as mitigating some of the safety concerns like hydrogen production, which would be associated with uh, an alternative approach to electrochemical refining. We're having this conversation in British Columbia, where of course you are based, of which the grid is what, like 97% hydroelectricity and 97% clean. So an electrochemical process is clearly compelling because you're, you're producing it with clean electricity. Does that mean that ultimately, the lithium that you're producing has a much lower overall emissions? Yes, yeah, uh, we've done life cycle analysis and we've done life cycle studies where we have analyzed how much electricity used versus a traditional process um, where the emissions are coming really from chemicals. 
Um, and what our, what our life cycle analysis has shown, that even if we were to use natural gas-based electricity, we would still have a, a carbon emissions reduction. Um, obviously, if we can have hydroelectric or if we can have solar, that has a much better emissions, uh, redu uh, rem uh, emissions reduction related to, to lithium. Why that's important is if you're producing your raw materials uh, in a cleaner way, lithium, nickel, whatever other processes that you're doing, what that all means is that an EV emissions at zero miles driven uh, are coming down. Uh, and that's what allows eventually for the EVs to have an even better emissions over, the, over their lifetime. The other thing that seems really clear here as well is that, as we said, it's a very simple solution. Does that result in a higher purity? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, when, we, when you think about the way that uh, conventional lithium processing is done, you're adding that sodium carbonate or sodium hydroxide in with your lithium stream and everything's mixing in a single tank. And then you're precipitating out the solids that you want to then send for battery manufacturing. That means that your lithium feed is in direct contact with these other uh, molecules throughout that process. By utilizing an electrochemical approach where each of your process streams are separated by membranes, it allows us to generate incredibly high purity lithium hydroxide as well as very high purity sulfuric acid. So that by the time that goes to a crystallizer, there's a lot less additional impurity that you need to manage in that downstream process to enable you to get to that high purity battery grade uh, specification. In terms of scaling this up, is it literally just a case of adding multiple electrolyzers or is there something more complicated going on? Yeah, so with, with any electrochemical system, uh, if you're running as a, as a, pr a production plant, uh, your production rate is the product of the area of your cell and the amount of electric current that you're pushing. So I can always take a small cell like this and just drive more current through it up to a point uh, to create more product. Uh, or I make a larger cell and keep a smaller current density to get to those higher currents. So ah. in order to go from this, um, which might give you, uh, you know, some kilograms of lithium hydroxide per year to a really full scale production facility, you're going to work with a much larger cell, uh, roughly something that's about one and a half meters tall, about a meter wide. Uh, and then you'll just have a number of these cells connected in series. Okay. So then that way you make a stack of electrolyzers, very similar to the way that when you are putting you know, your D cell batteries into a flashlight, you stack a bunch in series to get a higher voltage. Uh, you're kind of doing the, the same thing with an electrochemical stack. 70% of lithium refining currently takes place in China. That is a major risk for global supply chains in the battery industry, but a major opportunity for the likes of people like Mangrove Lithium. But above making these supply chains more robust, what we've seen here today is just cool innovation, genuine science and engineering that we can be excited about. And it seems that as these technologies, as electric technologies become more mainstream, the innovation will only continue. And in that case, so will we. But that is all that we have time for today. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Now visit electricvehicles.expert where you can follow everything electric and keep current with Clean Technica, The Driven, Electric and many more.